Welcome back to my corner of the internet, guys. I am the Lucid Dream, and on this one, we are going to head back to the north shore of Lake Potch Train for a rather sleepy fraud it. First and foremost, thank you to all of my channel members and subscribers. Without you, I would not be here. So as always, every day, thank you. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hello, YouTube. This is Ponch Train Audit here. Today, this is May 17th, 2024. I am outside the Tangipahoa Parish Courthouse. Going to go in, see if they respect my right to record the common areas as well as see what they have to say about my hat obviously last video you saw what they said <laughs> no cell phones on the second floor we'll see how that goes hello See you asleep. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, I just I just walked in. I was trying to, you know, I assume there's a process that I've got to go through, right? So I'll be honest. The only reason I made this video is because of this right here. The confusion in his voice. And this entire little interaction, it, it's so comical. I, I would think it was staged if I knew for a fact it wasn't. The, it, and I'll be honest, this tracks. This is southern Louisiana. This makes sense to me because there is absolutely nothing going on. He decided to take a little nap, uh, intentionally or unintentionally. Um, not saying he's right. I definitely don't condone sleeping on the job, but it doesn't make it any less funny. Uh, I'm just. Say that again. Walk around see as you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm an independent journalist, so I, I assume that's got to go in there. Yeah. Uh, there might be a coin in my pocket or two. Come on. Yeah. I don't know if that'll save it. I get your phone. What's your name, by the way? Hmm? What's your name? Dave Higginbottom. Nice to meet you. That's an interesting start. <laughs> Members looks like from the past. Uh, not at the moment. Uh, so that's the current clerk of court then. Uh, they're using the same LARS, which is <laughs> not valid. So once again, we have a frauditor who is confronted with a sign with an actual law who is convinced it is not valid because he does not understand it. Uh, it, this law is absolutely valid. It has to do with photocopying and imaging things inside the clerk of court's office in the state of Louisiana. It is 100% valid. They aren't using it to stop him from recording. Period. So him saying it's not valid is just stupid. It's because you can't photocopy, you can't make copies and reproductions of things within the clerk of court's office. You need to actually request a copy. They're not using it to stop him from recording. I think he might need to take a moment to understand that lack of comprehension does not invalidate laws. Other past clerk of courts. Code of professionalism. Interesting. And they have a suggestion box. That's cool. 
Looks like they got some mail. Legal Entitlement Department of Health. Oh, I, I just, I'm an independent journalist. Okay. I, I just, anytime I'm talking to somebody, I try to, you know, obviously, but. Operation Desert Storm thing. That's interesting. No cell phone use at the counter. <laughs> Cashier. That's why it says that, I think, but it's not really that enforceable. We have the civil department over here. Not at the moment, thank you. Legal assistance reference guide is up there. I have a copy room. <laughs> the same LRS posted on these. <laughs> Recording page. That's their copy room. That's criminal department. So if you don't remember, this is Pontchartrain Audit. The hat is unforgettable. Now, I have mixed feelings about this guy because I don't really see him as a frauditor. He is exhibiting some frauditor-esque behaviors. I think he is easily led. I think he is being... um influenced by youtube heavily but at the same time i don't think he has the inherent aggression needed to really propel his youtube channel forward which is a good thing you know we don't need any more frauditors we are going to skip a significant portion of this because i will be honest the only thing he does is wander around the courthouse and talk about the stuff on the walls I mean, that's it. They don't care that he's there. He spends 40 minutes doing this, and they absolutely do not care that he's there. I don't really need the help. Okay. I don't, I don't really need any help, and, you know. Okay. If I shouldn't be up here, there should be signs posting that Uh, there's no sign restricting it. If there's a file up there, we can get it for you. I, I'm not necessarily looking for a specific file. I'm just trying to see what I can see from public. Okay. Are these stairs open to the public? So at least in theory, I'm allowed to be where I'm standing, yes? yes. Yeah, so it looks like, looks like it's just like an access way. I find it hilarious how he was complaining about the first sign that had the statute on it that he said was invalid. That was a sign. And he didn't like that sign. But now, he wants a sign. You know what? I might be changing my mind. He's starting to annoy me. I don't know who he was talking to, but I'm going to at least try and not piss him off. I could try that, but no point. Criminal record service counter. See, that's how you do it right there. Employees only. I have 
an employee's rights board. I guess they just came in an emergency door or something. Interesting. Ooh, donuts. <laughs> he sounded more excited at the sight of those donuts than any other moment in this video. Oh, wait, that's says district attorney's office. Ah, uh, okay. Hello. I was, I was just wondering um, if the office was open to the public or not. Office, the DA's office? Yeah. This is the DA's office. Well, because I saw the door over there. You can't go back there. Okay. Well, that's what I was asking. I didn't know if it was open to the public or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No food or drinks allowed on the second floor. Got a nice little balcony here, though. No really need to go out there, though. Information Judges Chambers. Do not enter without permission. The store is locked. Cellular devices prohibited, etc., etc. It's funny, it says no talking in this area. <laughs> but it's like, that, that's, that seems like a blanket rule that can't be enforced. They might be out for lunch. It's about that time. Is it stairs that take you up to where we just were? Got some over there too. Erected in 1967. No. I got a quick question, if you don't mind. I just, I'm just wondering because uh, I know I, I tried the one elevator, and I'm, I'm guessing it's only accessed by a, a, some kind of a card, and I didn't realize that at first. Because um, I then tried the other one and noticed that one only went to two, and the other one went to three. So I'm, I'm just curious, uh, what, what is the third floor? I'm just curious, what is the third floor? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Oh, it's just the third floor. Um, well, because I, 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 I noticed... Jail. Oh, it used to be in jail. It used to be in jail. Now it's uh, being converted over to administration offices. Oh, okay. Wait, to what? I'm sorry? Administration. Ah, okay. I take it those are, I take it those are closed to the public. Um, yeah, some of the administration offices will be closed. Are any of them open to the public? Administration offices? Yeah. No? Okay. Well, I was... He came down today. You missed him? Yeah, he was When you called, he had left. What's going on? What's going on? No, it's a, it's a, no, it's it's a, another situation. Poor house. Oh. All right. I, I just assumed I saw you here and maybe somebody had called on me because it wouldn't be the first time, but... To record on the first floor to any uh, 
any office that's a public office. Well, I, I can record the second floor too, as long as I'm in public. As long as you're in the public office, a public space, you can record. Yeah, not in the public. But you're here right now. So. Well, I, I, w I just came down from the second floor, but yeah, okay. I just, you know, I, I know obviously. Technically, the courtrooms are supposed to be public spaces, but I know there's. I'm actually already debating that with courts, and I'm not going to go over that again. Cool. <laughs> All right, everybody ate? You ate? Yeah, I had lunch. Yeah, we, we just found out we had our last case. Are you all with the same? I take it you're all with the same department? Yeah, same department. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, are, are you a supervisor? Yeah, I am. Can I, can I just talk to you in private real quick? Yeah. Can I just talk to you in private real quick? You want to talk to me in private? Yeah, just real Without quick. Uh, either way. He's the only person here. Like here so. Well. Yeah, well. I, I would like to, I mean. Talking private. Well, here's, here's what we do. Because you can record publicly, we'll stay public. If I take you into a room or something that's private, you have to shut the camera down. Okay. Well, how, how about this? Because it'll be easier if I could just show you anyway. So I'll turn this off and sh uh, show you what I caught. So, so uh, yeah, I, I think I got a couple more offices that I haven't looked at yet. But. Okay, cool. So he turns his camera off and he snitches on the old man. I would have just bought him a coffee. Uh, real quick before we go, guys, there is some additional footage of the arrest of Hoyt Webb of Kootenai County Press that was aired on a different news channel. And I wanted to play this for you real quick because it does give us a different viewpoint. This was filmed by one of the friends of the victim. Just because people are homeless or on drugs doesn't make them a lesser person. I believe you to be evil by your videos with malice in your heart. That was the emotional testimony from the older brother of a man who Spokane police say was shot near 2nd and Division on Friday. Spokane County court documents show that the shooting suspect, 36-year-old Hoyt Webb, also confessed to live streaming that shooting. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kirsten O'Connor. And I'm Derek Dice. The live stream posted on Webb's YouTube account shows the moments leading up to the shooting and Webb's arrest after pulling the trigger. Here's where the shooting happened on Friday, just after 7 p.m. near the intersection of 2nd and Division in downtown Spokane. Our Hunter Bertram with why Webb was live streaming and the impact this has on our homeless community. This photo is from the live stream showing Webb armed with a gun strapped to his chest. Webb claims in a police interview when he arrived to the area, he got out of his car and said he saw a man with a machete. Instead of leaving the area, Webb went back to his car and grabbed his gun. He's harmless, man. Josh is a friend of the victim shot on Friday. Police say two bullets discharged from Hoyt Webb's gun, one hitting Josh's friend armed with an almost empty cup of iced coffee. That's disgusting. Josh was nearby when the shooting happened. He captured Webb being arrested and his friend lying on the ground fighting for their life. I hope he has some epiphanies in jail. I hope he has some time to think about what he did and the fact that like he really did hurt somebody who was harmless and innocent. According to court documents, Webb confessed to yelling at people and calling them names, which led to an argument between Webb and several individuals. Buy me Shortly after that, conflict erupted around the block. Drop the f rock! Know that I am here. Burn my face into your brain. I'm not going anywhere. Said the brother of the man shot. It appears that uh, you specifically went to this particular location for your own entertainment. Webb has a YouTube channel gotcha. named Kootenai County Press, where he goes into public places and confronts people, initiating arguments. And that's what he did on Friday. He claims to have been documenting the Spokane homeless crisis. You don't go around waving a gun around and a camera, you know. That's, that's totally counterproductive. Webb has been charged with first degree assault. Josh also added that members of this area's community rushed in after the gunshot to help the victim and keep the shooter from running. Webb's bond is set at $75,000. His arraignment is set for June 25th 
at 9 a.m. In studio, Hunter Bertram for News Now. As of right now, I have not received an update on the status of Thomas Hatch. If I do, I will let you guys know as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you would like to see, and I will catch you on the next one.